Marvel's Archer Extraordinaire takes on his first ever TV series. Does it hit the target or miss the mark? Find out when Johnny Torch reviews Hawkeye. Welcome back to another Johnny Torch review. It's been quite a while, and this review is probably a little bit uh, late, so to speak. Uh, unfortunately, the computer issues I was having prevented me from doing too many videos between late November and through December, but fortunately, that is all behind us now. And uh, so apologies for the a long delay in between reviews, but we're going to try to get to some of the things I've missed in that time. One such show was Hawkeye, starring Jeremy Renner and Haley Stansfield, I believe the lady's name is. I don't have uh, copious notes to take uh, from to talk about this here, so we're just going to kind of do it off the cuff this afternoon <clears throat> and uh, just give some general thoughts about the show. I uh, it was only, what, about seven episodes long, and it kind of felt longer. This was a show with a premise that, I don't know, it felt like they kind of had to drag it out to try to make something of this storyline. And uh, I wouldn't say it was awful. Uh, just for some context, I really, really liked Loki. I thought that was good. WandaVision, I think, was good. It was creative. Um, again, neither show probably a a blockbuster, you know, a, you know, sort of a must see program. But I thought they pretty much did what they were expected to do. Um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was disappointing. Uh, I haven't seen What If. So I really have no interest in that. But I would say this uh, fits pretty pretty squarely behind Loki and WandaVision. Uh, just for a quick recap, of course, there's going to be spoilers. I think everybody has seen the show by now, probably, or whoever hasn't seen it doesn't really care to see it. But uh, to recap, uh, Clint Barton is called away from his family during the Christmas season. He tries to retrieve the Ronin costume that falls into the hands of Haley Stansfield, character known as uh, Kate Bishop from the comics. Uh, you know, hilarity ensues as they try to do the sort of buddy cop routine over the course of Christmas week and some surprises along the way. Some villains show their faces and uh, another another excursion into the MCU. All right. <clears throat> With that underway, I have to say, I, I always liked Jen Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye. I, I really wanted him to have some kind of, you know, a show of his own, a movie of his own, a situation where he can really flourish and be the star of the show instead of sort of being the, you know, the, sort of the Avenger that gets a little more screen time during one of the, collective movies. This one really didn't give him a whole lot to do. When it does give him something to do, it's pretty fun. Most of the time, it's focusing on Kate Bishop. And her story is honestly not that interesting. I did like that they started it where she was, from very young, a Hawkeye fan. That that's what wanted her to that, that's what inspired her to want to become a superhero and to learn the bow and arrow and archery skills and so on and so forth. Sleep. There's some intrigue involving her mother and stepfather, who I believe is supposed to be a Marvel C-list villain known as Swordsman. Uh, everything, of course, gets tied back to the Kingpin. And Vincent D'Onofrio, of course, makes his triumphant return here. Um. 
I was glad to see Vincent D'Onofrio included here. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Netflix Daredevil. I did think he was a good kingpin, so it was nice to see them bring him back. Um, kind of interesting the way they bring him back. I don't know if Netflix is canon with the MCU. In fact, I'm probably betting it isn't. Although they are, to their credit, trying to use these actors that are very good in the roles, but are probably going to sort of nix the backstory. And if not soft reboot it, then just completely call it an alternate universe, seeing as how the multiverse is now in play. Uh, yeah, D'Onofrio's Kingpin, seemingly like the Incredible Hulk in this in this uh, series, he, uh, you know, basically just tearing through in his fight scene with Kate Bishop, knocking her around, and uh, later getting shot point blank, which... I imagine would kill the normal kingpin being human, but unfortunately it doesn't make any sense. I'm guessing this is going to lead up into something for Hawkeye season two, but uh, again, nice to see D'Onofrio back as Wilson Fisk. Uh, the other villain that we have, the emerging villain Echo, which I don't know too much about from the comics, but um, she is a deaf super villain i suppose in this before she uh kind of turns the situation around and uh becomes i guess a hero uh with her trying to execute kingpin but she is sort of like an underling for the kingpin at the start of the show and she's the one that's the driving force trying to kill hawkeye during all this uh in the meantime we also see uh, of course, Florence Pugh return as the Black Widow. She's one of my favorite things about this series. She is just so much fun to watch. And she just commands the screen whenever she's on. She does make a pretty good pairing with uh, Steinfeld's uh, Kate Bishop. But uh, basically, her just having a conversation with her in the kitchen was was uh, a lot more riveting than it had any reason to be. Uh, I think Florence has just taken hold of that character so well. Uh, she's just so much fun to watch. She was one of the high points of the Black Widow movie and uh, is also a high point in this series. And, of course, she squares off against Hawkeye, as was promised at the end of the Black Widow movie. And I think it was well done. I think it was well written and very well acted. They uh, sort of come to an understanding that, of course, you know, someone is feeding um, Yelena some bad info and that it really wasn't Hawkeye's fault that uh, Natasha took the plunge, so to speak. So it, it, it worked out kind of as expected, but I thought it, it, it didn't feel run of the mill. It didn't feel like routine it did feel like it was a real centerpiece to this series. Natasha's memory is felt very strongly at several points. And of course, uh, again, as I said, the problem with the show is it does feel very talky. Now you can say that's true. Probably of a lot of the MCU shows, I guess, but they seem to really pack a punch with the action scenes. In this case, it reminded me a little more of Netflix MCU shows where you have a lot longer conversations that need uh, that than were needed to be. You have, you know, uh, situations being set up and taking a very long time doing so. Uh, when the action happens it is good it's very exciting we have a couple of scenes of hawkeye with his trick arrows and creating more trick arrows and you know again it just feels like a very serviceable series it feels like where i was kind of hoping for it to be sort of the you know huge swan song that jeremy renner would have to go out on it does feel kind of like a pot boiler where they're just they're, they're trying to do something interesting with Clint while building up Kate Bishop's story and trying to make her an emerging hero. Again, it's not 
it's not hugely compelling and must see TV, but at the same time, I mean, this is pretty much all I expected of a Hawkeye series. I mean, they do give you pretty much what you expect. Um, you know, Clint is sort of going through the trope of the unwilling mentor who kind of like tells Kate, he gives her the brush and tells her to pretty much leave him alone on, on more than one occasion. And, you know, Kate is trying to rise to the occasion and be the hero that she hopes to be and, and sort of be his uh, sidekick or successor. Again, it's uh, it's pretty much standard stuff. I I, I think it's uh, probably I'm going to give it a B plus. I think it's it's pretty good, but again, it stretches the premise a little too much. It's certainly not as bad as the YouTube rage mongers wanted it to be. It's it's not horrible and and not overly woke. Um, again, Kate doesn't really seem, because she's new at this, doesn't really seem too good at the game. And so she can, you know, do fairly well at archery. So she's fairly gymnastic. They don't really try to over impress us with her skills. And she still obviously needs Clint as a guiding force. Um, I would give this a B plus, which would make it, I don't know, a probably three and a half stars out of five. And I don't know what that would make it maybe a seven, maybe a seven out of ten. Uh, they also uh, sort of give a sort of a, a hint at the end of Clint's wife that she was somehow in S.H.I.E.L.D., which kind of impressed me because I think they might be setting up that she's Mockingbird in this continuity. Kind of sad that they're not going to use the the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mockingbird, but it's kind of understandable that I guess they, they're, they're treating that as a different universe than this, which, again, I, I don't really think that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., because there was some attempt to tie it into the MCU. Unlike the Netflix shows where they kind of were like, well, here's a newspaper headline in the background. There's your tie to the MCU. Hulk was in New York. Uh, in, in, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s case, particularly in the early seasons, they tried to tie it to the MCU at large with, you know, guest stars and, you know, some intricate plotting in between like Samuel L. Jackson and S.H.I.E.L.D. and Coulson. As the show kind of evolved, it became less tied to it because it was more about, well, there really is no S.H.I.E.L.D. anymore in the MCU. So it's basically Phil Coulson and his sort of close knit group of shadow operatives. You know, it didn't really seem as tied to the MCU because apparently Feige didn't really want it as part of the MCU and the powers that be, I don't know who it was, Bob Iger maybe was uh, just trying to keep running the ship as long as they could. Uh, also, the costumes, they still didn't really give us the traditional Hawkeye costume. I suppose this is an improvement over his standard costume over the past few movies. I think... They tried to give Kate the very purpley purple costume, I guess, because, you know, black is more manly for Clint, even though his character wears all purple in the comics. And, of course, no mask, which they kind of make an offhand joke about that. You know, the mask. Eh, you know, I would have liked a more traditional looking Hawkeye costume, uh, you know, even without the mask. But, you know, it looks like they're trying to make some improvements uh, in this. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, what's going, what's going to happen going forward again, we're going to find out what happens to Kingpin. That'll be interesting. I believe there's going to be an echo series, which is going to spin off from this. 
Uh, I don't know how much that's going to be tied into it. There is some rumors that maybe Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock will appear on the Echo series, which would set up, of course, maybe a meeting down the line between uh, Daredevil and Kingpin. Uh, Cox's Daredevil and D'Onofrio's Kingpin. I don't know. It's all, you know, it's all speculation right now. But again, they got a very big universe now to play with. If we're bringing all these characters in, very easy to spin them off into their own shows. And again, uh, you know, there, there was uh, there was another interesting thing with having Hawkeye losing his hearing. I thought that kind of came out of nowhere. Now, I did find out that that is something that is in the comics. I don't really know why. I guess because they want to make it like Iron Man, where you never know when his heart's going to conk out. It's got an artificial heart or something of that nature. And in the case of Hawkeye, he's got a hearing aid that might conk out at any time, and you don't know how he's going to react to it. And it's kind of like the Marvel method of giving him a weakness. But I didn't really feel it was necessary. You know, it's just... Kind of, you know, again, we've got to show diversity. We don't have a deaf hero. We don't have a hard of hearing hero. So we've got two of them apparently in this show. Eh, whatever. Um, I also liked the Rogers musical. And I could tell the guy from No Vacancy was uh, the first uh, singer in that. That was pretty cool because uh, I, I've got a soft spot for <laughs> soft spot for no vacancy they may have been posers in school of rock but um uh heal me i'm heartsick is still a favorite i like that song so it was fun to hear him uh singing and of course that that kind of uh bombastic stage play that they're trying to they're trying to spoof uh rogers you know sort of like hamilton i guess that was a lot of fun so, yeah, I think that about does it. We're about to wrap it up. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Did you enjoy Hawkeye? Are you looking forward to seeing more from Hawkeye in the future? Who do you want to see guest on the show? Lo <laughs> Will Florence Pugh's Yelena return? That's a distinct possibility, although I do think they're going to probably hold her off on to feature films. But we'll have to wait and see. So, uh, yeah, once again, the final tally, I'm going to give Hawkeye a B plus. That's about three and a half stars out of five, and uh, we'll say a seven out of ten. We'll see what happens next season, and until next we meet, this is Johnny Torch reminding you once again, keep the flame burning brightly, and I'll be with you again real soon. Mm -hmm.